Oh, no! No! Y'all get the closet. Get the closet right now. The internet is filled with just an endless amount of content for people to search for, and whether the content being searched is educational or entertaining, they both provide a way to help people escape from the ugliness of the real world. However, an endless amount of content on the internet also provides an endless amount of disturbing content that not only reminds people of the ugliness of the real world, but will even go as far as traumatize people sometimes. And in this video, I will be going over some of the internet's most disturbing content that will make many people feel uneasy. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be terrified as we explore the internet's disturbing side. The first entry I will be discussing in this video is about a very horrifying and sad thing that happened during a video uploaded by a channel named Depths of History. And in case you don't know what content Depths of History uploads, the content it uploads revolves around hunting for treasure, whether it be by scuba diving, metal detecting, or even magnet fishing. And the channel is run by someone named Britain, who has amassed over 350,000 subscribers on his channel. On Britain's channel, there have been multiple instances in which he and whoever he was with found stuff while treasure hunting that wasn't too pleasing. However, in this video, I'll be discussing what Britain and his friends found on this video that was uploaded on March 11th, 2021. In the video, Britain and his friends who were named Jeff and Riley go magnet fishing in an urban canal located in Memphis, Tennessee. And at the start of the video, Britain says that he hopes that he and his friends will find something that will help a police case. Or if not, then they will just get trash out of a canal. After Britain and his friends made their way to the canal, they immediately found their first treasure without even magnet fishing, which was a lawnmower. First find of the day right there. Lawnmower. You need a lawnmower, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Look at that, it's right there. Alright. Britain later mentions that there is a lot of trash in the canal, and that if they were to clean up all the trash in the canal, they would have to get trash bags and spend hours cleaning it up. The next treasure that Britain and his friends find is an iPhone, which is not only broken, but a brand new one too. Oh, look at that, an iPhone. Really? I've got one. Oh, it's a newer one. Look at that. I just got that live too. We need to keep our voices down. Dude, that is, it's like, it's like pretty new. Look at that thing, man. Hey, that's cool. Dude, bro. that that's is cool so iPhone. cool. You might be able to say. Britain then starts going magnet fishing in the canal and finds a bunch of random objects that seem like they would be in an urban canal. But all of a sudden, the group finds a garbage bag with something in it that's right next to the canal's water and they decide to see what's inside of it. However, what was inside the bag was something so gruesome that they were left in shock when they first saw it. What the heck? That's oh weird. It's been like, up. it's been smashed up. Someone just like stomp on this thing repeatedly. There's something, there's something in that bag. Oh, 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 no, no. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. You've got to be kidding. That's illegal, isn't it? Yes, it's illegal. Oh yeah, my god. Maybe doggy. Oh, that is so sad, dude. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh my god. Britain, Jeff, and Riley managed to find a dead dog inside of a garbage bag, which I'm guessing that they couldn't stop thinking about it after they saw it. And despite the group seeing something that was just downright morbid, they still continued to go magnet fishing in the canal in hopes of finding any treasures that are interesting and cool. While the group was magnet fishing, Britain mentions that he will call the police and tell them that they found a dead dog in the canal. And while continuing their time magnet fishing, the group found a lot of butter knives in the canal, which I guess might seem kind of sketchy. 
Another butter knife over there. Yeah. Look, he just found a butter knife right there too. <laughs> Is there another knife? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, another butter knife. Man, how'd you see that? I wasn't I even able to see that. <laughs> this seems like insane, man. Another butter knife. <laughs> another and a butter knife. knife. <laughs> another one. Look at all the trash up there, bro. However, the group would stumble upon one more dead animal, which was a dead duck, and also find a bag full of crystal meth. Oh my gosh, and speaking of which, are you serious? No, dude, that's sad. I think it's already oh, dead. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. that duck in there. It's already dead. Sad, that's man. That's terrible, man. Yeah, this is a really sad thing. Open the last bag, Jeff. You're going to open this one. Wait, so we just found a bag we right need, here. We need, to be quiet. You, we need to be quiet. I know. I don't know, dude. It looks like something green in there. What the crap? What oh, is it? Dude. It's a mess bag. It is? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. There's crystals in it. Oh, I see him. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what that is. Oh, yeah, there he is. Gosh. Towards the end of the video, the group finishes their time magnet fishing, and before they leave the area, they bury the dead dog and call the police. While going treasure hunting can be thrilling when finding things that are cool and interesting, there's always a chance that something horrifying may just be waiting to be found. And in Britain, Jeff and Riley's case, they certainly found something horrifying. This next entry focuses on something that happened recently on October 2nd, 2022, in San Antonio, Texas, where a police officer named James Brennan shot and wounded a 17-year-old named Eric Cantu while he was innocently enjoying his burger he got at McDonald's. What led to the shooting was when James heard about an unrelated disturbance at a McDonald's restaurant, which prompted him to drive over to the McDonald's parking lot, to which he saw Eric inside his car eating a McDonald's burger before asking him to get out of his car, to which he refused to do. James would then fire several shots at Eric, which wounded him, but fortunately Eric managed to survive due to him driving his car away from James and stopping next to someone else in their car to help him contact police to get him to safety. Eric would later be hospitalized in stable condition, and five days later, Bexar County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez would mention that he had not seen enough evidence to file charges against Eric. Despite Eric initially being charged for evading James Brennan and assaulting him, James Brennan would later be fired from his job for violating his training and police procedures. And as of making this video, Eric Cantu is still alive and recovering from his injuries. What's most disturbing of all about Eric Cantu's case is that while James Brennan was assaulting him, James was recording a video from his body cam showing him assaulting Eric which the video in question is more than disturbing if you ask me. What I am about to show you now is the video recorded from James Brennan's body cam, which shows Eric being assaulted. However, I must notify you that I will be censoring the part of the video when James pulls out his gun and shoots Eric, so I don't break YouTube's community guidelines. Anyways, here is the video. Can you start me one more? I got a vehicle over here that uh, fled from me the other day. He's in the parking lot. 10 4. Get you somebody else over there. 30 3, go ahead and send way over there with 3161. He's going to be off of 11, send 100 blank over to the McDonald's. And 3161, you want him, uh, want him running code? 10 4. Nice and play. Get out of the car. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired on 3161, 1100, Blanco Road, code 320, open up. 
This next entry is very grim and horrifying, but it's perfect for me to talk about in this video. On January 16th, 2021, Jahadi Chansey, a 23-year-old entrepreneur, was innocently enjoying his time at his recording studio he owned in Staten Island, New York, when he suddenly heard someone knocking on his door at around 7 p.m. Chansey would then open the door, only to find that there was two people waiting at his recording studio's front porch who were ready to murder him, and would then be shot in the back several times after he tried to run away from his killers. When paramedics took Chansey to the Staten Island University Hospital, he was still conscious when he made it to the hospital, although he sadly died as a result of his bullet wounds. While Jihadi Chansey was being murdered, his friends were also present at his recording studio with him and tried to stop the killers, but were unsuccessful in doing so. Jihadi Chansey's murder was recorded by a doorbell camera, and in the video we can see that the two killers were wearing hoodies and masks although they were unaware that they were being recorded on camera. In the video, one killer can be seen carrying a rifle, while the other one can be seen carrying a handgun, and the killer carrying the rifle ran inside the studio first before his partner did. It should also be noted that one of the killers was described as being 5 feet 8 inches tall and 150 pounds with a tattoo under his eye and having short dreadlocks, while the other killer was described as being 6 feet tall and wearing black sweats and a dark jacket. Now that I told you all the background information about Jihadi Chansey's murder, I will now show you guys the video that captured Jihadi Chansey's murder. However, just like the last entry's video, I will be censoring some elements of it so this video doesn't get taken down by YouTube. Anyways, here is the video. Before we move on to the next entry, I should mention that the two people who murdered Jihadi Chansey were eventually caught by the police in June of 2021. Police arrested 29-year-old Ming Liu and 30-year-old Darren Boyd, who were both from Newark, New Jersey, and both ended up facing multiple charges for their committed crime, which included murder, assault, and burglary. Police also ended up arresting a third person involved in Jihadi Chansey's murder, which was a 29-year-old man named Charles Brooks, who was also from Newark, New Jersey. Although, Charles was arrested in May of 2021, which was before the other two criminals were arrested, and Charles would later be charged with murder, attempted murder, assault, and burglary. While it's sad to hear that Jihadi Chansey died from his murder, at least the criminals involved in his murder were caught, and will serve their prison sentences for the awful crime they all committed. This next entry focuses on a very controversial YouTuber who was heavily criticized for her disturbing beliefs on topics that aren't suitable for pretty much anyone. On May 8, 2012, a Canadian woman named Jen Ketchison created a YouTube channel named after her first name and would later begin uploading highly controversial and disturbing videos where she would advocate for. And over the span of her time on YouTube, she also made guilt admission videos, self-improvement videos, vlogs, and channel updates. 
out of all of Jen's most disturbing videos, one of her earliest videos on her channel features her admitting that she killed her pet rabbits because she didn't think that they'd have as good of a life after she got rid of them so she can put herself first instead of them. In another video, Jen advocated for people to have the choice to be incest as long as it is between two consenting adults which had some people strongly agreeing with her, while also having people feeling disgusted over what she was advocating for. It, it, was, it was a really interesting episode and I was just, I don't know, I was kind of like surprised by like that message because to me, like, I don't know, I don't really think of incest as being like a bad thing, I guess. Like, the way I see it is basically like when it comes to like sex or anything really, if you know, everyone involved in the situation is okay with what's going on, then there's nothing wrong with it. So, to me, like, I mean, if family members, like, people you're related to, you want to, like, sleep with them, okay, you know what, if you're both, everyone wants to, you know, it's fine with it, I don't think it should matter. Now, like, I do totally, I understand, like, the whole, like, you know, making babies with people with, like, you know, similar DNA, that's not the best idea because you can... Obviously, like, it can, there can be issues involved with that, you know, the DNA is too similar, you end up with, like, birth defects, and, okay, so it's probably not the smartest plan to make babies with your, like, cousin or sibling or whatever. But, I mean, we all know sex isn't just for making babies. In fact, most of the time it's not for the purpose of making babies. So, I mean, seriously, I don't really think it should matter. In a much worse video, Jen said, isn't as big of a deal as it's made out to be. And in her most infamous video, she advocated for saying, quote, children are just as sexually curious as adults, unquote. Due to Jen uploading many disturbing and shocking videos to her channel, it would only be a matter of time when other YouTubers would discover her channel and make response videos on her content. And this was definitely the case in the year 2017, when YouTubers Blair White, Repsion and Ready to Glare made videos calling Jen out for her disturbing opinions, which would cause Jen's channel to receive a lot of negative attention and comments hating on her. There's a problem here on YouTube. There is a community of people that are not being discussed, criticized, ridiculed. I came across them quite recently and I'm pretty perplexed as to why more people are not talking about this. I don't know if it's because the community in question we're talking about is small and therefore they go under the radar. I don't know if this is an out of sight, out of mind thing, that it's so taboo, people don't want to touch it and talk about it. But uh, we are going to talk about it. Hey Jimmy, I know you're only six years old, but are you attracted to me? Do you find me cute? Do you think I'm a good looking man or woman? Yeah, you are. You're super cute. In a little baby voice. I'm attracted to you too, Jimmy. Let's have sex, Jimmy. What sex? Let me show you. <laughs> uh, I know that's fucked up, but that, that's, 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 that's what I'm thinking in my fucking head right now. Quite a new gem of wisdom here. Having sex with someone in your family and having babies is probably not the smartest idea. I just... It's a terrible idea. While this entry is disturbing, there is a lost media aspect to this entry, since Jen would eventually delete all of her videos on her YouTube channel and on her other social media accounts in 2021 leaving only her Tumblr remaining for some time before later deleting it. In February of 2022, a Lost Media Wiki user named Grigio Guy would upload five of Jen's videos to YouTube, although they would all be taken down eventually after Jen issued copyright claims on all of them. However, on June 13th, 2022, a Lost Media Wiki user named Wars would leave a comment saying that he had archived Jen's entire channel before it was taken down and provided a link to a torrent file containing all of Jen's videos. And as of making this video, we don't know the reason why Jen decided to delete all of her videos and the link to the torrent file that Wars gave to everyone doesn't work anymore. However, you can still watch samples of Jen's videos by watching Blair White's, Repsion's, and Ready to Glare's response videos to her. 
This next entry refers to something that happened in April of 2022, when a YouTuber named Kevin Hansen, who runs a channel named Lawn Care Juggernaut, stumbled upon something very horrifying after trying to do a good deed, which that good deed was to cut a homeowner's overgrown lawn while filming himself doing it for his latest video. At first, Kevin thought the house was empty, until cops eventually started showing up, and Kevin later learns that he had just stumbled upon a crime scene, and that the homeowner was dead. So, um, there is a, uh, someone is deceased in there. Um, so they asked me to hang out for a bit, but I, I don't think I'm going to be finished this one up, guys. I'm sorry, but yeah, so. Before Kevin found out that the homeowner was dead, he knocked on the homeowner's door to get a chance to speak with him, before later knocking on a neighbor's door to see if he can find out why the homeowner's house looked abandoned. Eventually, Kevin would talk to a resident of the homeowner's area, who told him that the house was most likely foreclosed, since there was no one coming into and out of the house for a while. Kevin Hansen would later find out that the house's windows were left open, and later had an epiphany that the house couldn't have been foreclosed, since it would be strange to foreclose a house and have its windows left open. Alright, I didn't want to say this in front of my wife, but uh, I just put two and two together. So all the windows were open on the house when, you know, we stopped here, right? Or when I, when I went to knock on the door and, and I thought it was odd the, the windows were open and then I found out it was empty. This isn't empty because it got foreclosed on. Um, I was smelling a strong smell of death over there. The windows are open, there's flies in the house. I peeked in when I was setting the camera up over here to catch my wife. I didn't want to say it in front of her, but uh, I'm going to mow this, but I'm not going to weed eat. I mean, it's strong, very, very strong. So I'm going to put my respirator on. I'll knock down the height, but I'll be honest, I'm just cutting this one and getting out of here. I'm not a fan of uh, death being around it, smelling it. The smell makes me, uh, well, it makes me very sick. She's like, you all right? And I'm like, I want to puke. Uh, Especially with the thought of knowing oh, I'm in the middle of the job and I don't like leaving them half done. That's all right. I'm I'm okay with leaving this not we did it in the back. I'm sorry guys, but I'm I'm gonna polish up the front because the smell's not up there. But uh, that's very unfortunate. You know, somebody lost a loved one. I don't know what it was, what was the cause, but that is definitely 100% um, death. Kevin later called the cops who would enter the home to carry out a wellness check, before the officers later told Kevin that the homeowner's house is a crime scene and that the homeowner is dead. Eventually, Kevin would fill out a witness statement before packing up his lawn mowing equipment and leaving the property after experiencing a shocking moment that will stick with him for the rest of his life. Alright, so uh, that's that property. I'm going to leave it a mess. Um, unfortunately, um, like I said, it, it's a crime scene at this point. I wish I hadn't have, uh, cut this lawn on one hand and on the other hand, um, I'm glad I did. Who knows how long it would have been before that person was found. So, uh, my heart goes out to the family and the, uh, loved ones that are involved. Um, uh, that's, that's really all I can say. So I wish them the best. And I don't know, death is just hard all around, isn't it? So um, I might take a moment to say a prayer for loved ones and I'm not sure. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go home and uh I don't know, take a shower and just uh, get my mind off of it. 
This next entry is about a home invasion that happened on September 14th, 2022 in Portsmouth, Virginia, when two unidentified suspects invaded a home that had two elderly residents living in it. The two suspects entered the home at around 1.50 p.m. and ordered the two elderly residents to get inside of a linen closet as they pointed their firearms at them. And not only that, but their home invasion was recorded by a surveillance camera in which one of the victims can be seen having trouble walking to the closet and was using a walker. Once the residents were inside their closet, the suspects started taking items from their home, including what appeared to be cell phones. And seconds later, one of the suspects appeared on camera, carrying a safe full of money. Their entire home invasion lasted 1 minute and 6 seconds, and the two suspects who invaded the home would eventually be caught by the police. Investigators would later identify the suspects as 25-year-old Mitchell Bonney Jr. and 22-year-old Tyree DeMont Bonney Jr., who were previously wanted for armed burglary, and also being wanted for use of firearms, abduction, and conspiracy to commit a burglary. After the two suspects were caught by the police, investigators then found out that they had previously invaded a home in the 2600 block at Turnpike Road, one week prior to them invading the home in Portsmouth, Virginia. The elderly male victim would later confirm that there were tens of thousands of dollars in the safe that Mitchell and Tyree robbed, and the money belonged to someone else who was staying with him and his wife, who was the female victim being robbed. The person who owned the safe was able to connect the dots and help the police find the suspects who committed the robbery. However, the elderly couple that was robbed will most likely never forget being victims of an almost deadly robbery. The video I am about to show you guys captures the home invasion unfolding, and it's a very horrible video to watch, especially if you were once a victim of a home invasion before. Anyways, here is the video. This last entry takes us back to mid-2020, when TikTokers were taking part in a new challenge known as the Benadryl Challenge. In case you don't know what the Benadryl Challenge is, it is a challenge in which participants are to take higher than recommended doses of Benadryl, which is a medicine that is used to relieve people from allergies and symptoms of the common cold. And after taking the doses of Benadryl, participants will be able to experience a high that can cause hallucinations. However, the Benadryl challenge was later proven to be very harmful for those who took part in it, since they suffered from serious heart problems, seizures, comas, or even brain damage. And those people were the luckier ones, since others have been reported to have died after taking part in the challenge. The most famous incident of someone dying from the TikTok Benadryl challenge was when a 15-year-old girl named Chloe Phillips died on August 21st, 2020 after overdosing on Benadryl. And before Chloe's death, three teens from Fort Worth, Texas were hospitalized after they participated in the Benadryl challenge in May of 2020. One of the teens who died was a 14-year-old girl named Rebecca, who took 14 Benadryl tablets in the middle of the night on Memorial Day, causing her to later suffer terrible hallucinations and have a resting heart rate of 199 beats per minute before later dying. 
In May of 2020, TikTok would tell the Sun Publishing Company that they quickly removed a very small amount of the content on their platform that focused on taking part in the Benadryl Challenge. However, TikTokers would still take part in the challenge, and as a result, the US Food and Drug Administration would later issue a warning about the dangerous challenge. As of making this video, the Benadryl challenge is fortunately dead, and hopefully it will never make a comeback on TikTok ever again. However, the Benadryl challenge is just one of many harmful challenges that TikTok once offered. And if you don't believe me, then check out my next video where I cover a variety of harmful challenges that once took place on TikTok. Assuming you are watching this video after I uploaded my next video. Anyways, I hope to see you in my next video, and good night, and take care everyone.